Hey, Dave. How's it going, man? Not bad. How are you? Quite well, thanks. Yeah. Uh, thanks Thanks for doing this. No worries, yeah. I'm going to say thanks for having me. Yeah, it's been a long time coming. Like, uh, Indeed. Well, like it felt like it for me anyways, but that was... Uh, that's just the way it goes, I guess. I uh, imagine you're quite busy. Yeah, very. It's like... Um, these days time is something that other people have <laughs> not me anymore yeah but it's nice i like it I, I like being busy i don't like i don't like to be idle it, it, it drives me insane when i've got nothing to do so it's, it's all good yeah it's a good problem to have mm. indeed indeed that's lovely yeah so uh it seems like you're getting asked to do a lot more stuff uh like I've seen you on the Andrew channel a lot, and then I Thank saw those clips you posted of the the fashion show. Was it that was yeah. interesting? Yeah, that that. How did that come about? That was a weirdo thing. That is like that's like one of those things that I don't think will ever happen again. Um, what the deal with that was was the designer. Um, he he had based his entire line of clothes with the Winter collection of his clothes around the Jump Shanty song before the beginning. So everything about it was based around that song, which is insane. And um, yeah, when, when he came down to obviously like you know the show, they were like, "Well, we can't just have the song play because the the, the show is going to take about fifteen to twenty minutes, and the song's only about eight minutes." So he was like, "Well, we need somebody to perform it." So he went on YouTube and typed in "before the beginning cover," and I came up at the top. Um, and he clicked on my video that I did whenever. Um, years ago, and he was like, "Oh, he'll do." And what? We'll, and, and then he contacted me on Instagram, saying, "Would you like to play Paris Fashion Week?" I'm like, "Yes, yes, I would." <laughs> so it was a bit of a weird, weird tumultuous kind of like thing, but it, it was really fun. It was stressful at the time, not particularly fun while I was there. The performance was oh, I kind can of like imagine. thing that went right, but yeah, it was, it was good. Praise. Yeah. Like, I it makes more sense now that I learned that it was you know based around that song because uh, without that piece of information I couldn't understand. I was like, why, why is this happening and why is he playing before the beginning? Like, yeah, that's really cool though. Mm. And like, I, it, it was such a, sorry. Uh, I was just gonna say such like an epic thing to play too. Oh god, yeah, it was it was insane. It was it, it, when because uh, again. John for Shanty's solo, everyone knows the Chili Peppers, everyone knows kind of like what he does in the chilies. When it comes down to John's solo stuff, you don't really, you know, I, I, you don't really get a lot of people saying like, you know, can you come and perform before the beginning? It's normally, can you play Danny California or Scar Tissue or, or whatever? It's yeah. not, but play before the beginning. <laughs> it was a bit of a weird, random event. Again, especially for Paris Fashion Week. It's like the last place you would ever mm. think to see somebody playing yeah. that kind of music, yeah, it was yeah. cool. Yeah, very cool. I want does. I wonder if the guy knows like that. It's kind of John's maggot brain. I I know. I, I I always wondered that as well. He seemed he he seemed to be kind of more obsessed with the song was for him to trip out on drugs on. Like that was more kind yeah, of like. Yeah. <laughs> Like right. I like doing, it, it, I like I like listening to his song because he makes me feel like I'm on drugs. And it's like okay, but there's there's more I think to it. I, than I don't know where, I don't know where I read it, but uh, I thought there was something that John said about the Empyrean about the album, saying like this was music he had created for people to listen to in their living rooms late at night with the lights off and trip out. Yeah, I remember so, that as well. Makes yeah. Sense. yeah, that's really yeah. cool. Yeah, an album uh, and orange. Orange supplied you with some amps to play, too, uh, right? Well, yeah, they supplied the cabs. Yeah, because um, I drove from where I where I where where I live to Paris because I needed a what. They said, "Oh, we can rent you a backline," and I was like, "Well, the odds on me getting an amp that will do what I needed to do could be very slim." If I asked for like you know an Orange or a, or a Marshall or whatever, so I wanted two different amplifiers to give two different sounds. Um. I was like, well, I'll just take my own amps and then I'll ask Orange if they can supply me four four twelve cabinets. And when I asked Orange first, I was saying, Oh, can can I get four four twelves? They were like, Do you want dummies? And I was like, No, they need to work. And they were like, 
And they're like, why? And I'm like, I just need them to work. So it was a bit of a kind of a weird moment, but um, they, 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 they really came through and like it, they, they were, the cabs were amazing as well. I wanted to steal them because they sounded fantastic. So I was like, why can't I take these? But it was really cool. Yeah. It looked really cool too. How you were just sit, like set up in the center like that. Like uh, that, it, that was awesome. Yeah. It was great for me. Cause it's like being behind the cabs now to wear earplugs. Cause I wasn't the one getting punched in the face by the immense volume. Right. It was coming out. Right. 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 Yeah. That would, that'd be crazy if they were all facing in on you. Yeah. I, I, I wouldn't have enjoyed that so much. It'd been so loud. It's so loud out the front. I don't know how people took it, but like, it was just horrific, but so I've yeah yeah that's, that's what cool. they told me to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not your fault. Yeah. The the uh, the orange like you go way back with the uh, orange jams because you know like back when I was really starting to get into guitar mm. like seriously and get into John's playing, I was watching your videos. This is back. I don't know when did, when were you putting out the how to sound like John Frusciante series videos. Uh, to, uh, about 2014, 2015, I think. Like that's when they started. Yeah. Yeah, I think, because I feel like, you know, I, I stumbled upon them, I watched them, and then I maybe caught, like, I was following you when you uploaded the last few of them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so me, this, is, this is around the time I was living in Vancouver. So I, I was thinking in my head, like, 2015, 2016. Yeah, it'd be around that time, yeah. And yeah, and, and you were also doing the... Like how to or all these tone amps out of the sorry, yeah. I don't know what it was called, it, but it was how many people can you sound like with an orange CR one twenty? Yeah, it was yeah, it was an, it was it was um it was an idea I had of like you know you can get so much out of one amp. How many people can I get through? I got through quite a lot before YouTube's copyright protection scheme destroyed it. So, because uh, I'd still be doing them now if I could get away with it, but like the moment you play anything copyright now, it's like stop doing that. We've heard you. So yeah, it's uh, <laughs> that's that over. Same with John. Okay. Yeah. Was... Okay. So that that's why you're kind of not doing that. Yeah, it's, it, uh, I don't. Co- uh, technically, I don't own. Uh, I've got twenty twenty two episodes, I think, of my How to Play Like John Shani series, and I don't own anything from them because they were all claimed by Warner Brothers so I don't earn any money from them I don't um, right. I basically don't own them anymore because Warner Brothers have claimed them for their own they've gone they belong to us now even though it should technically fall under fair use fair use doesn't apply to big corporations like that so um, so yeah it was it, it became kind of like yeah it, it stopped in its tracks and because they took such a long time to right. film and edit it was just it, it became tough basically Right, and yeah. that's that's only that's only you playing like parts of the songs. Yeah, right. Yeah, you're not and playing along with backing tracks or no, and teaching using the any of the original. Yeah, yeah, the teaching. I, yeah. I I recently did a video um, teaching the Budokan. I could have lied final solo. That's coming out at some point. Uh, I forget where, but um, I thought maybe I can get away with doing teaching John's improvisational solos because technically those are improvisations. Yeah. And if I don't play them to the exact backing track, maybe I can get away with it. And uh, I don't want to, you know, touch wood. But I'm, at this point in time, that video right. is still live. It's, well, it's not live, but it, it's waiting to uh, go out. So hopefully that will be okay. And that's something I can kind of get back into doing because I miss doing those right. videos on jobs. Yeah, that was one of the things I wanted to ask you about. Uh, mm. Because like someone had mentioned to me the other day, um, that may, maybe you weren't doing any John Frusciante content anymore. Um, mm, it, it's it's not because I don't want to. It's, I, I I can't. It, it, like I say, I mean, YouTube is how I make a living. Uh, that's my that's my job. So when I do a video that gets claimed by Warner Brothers or whoever else, they take all the revenue away. Not like they need it. And as a result of that, I don't earn anything. If I don't earn anything, I can't sustain it. And if I can't sustain it, I can't do it. So I have to be very, very careful uh, with what I do do and what I play. Um, and they got me on silly things. I mean, I remember I got, I got copyright flagged once for five seconds of feedback by ACDC. ACDC claimed five seconds of a video for feedback saying, that's uh, that's uh, uh, TNT, you can't do that. 
Like, oh, okay. it's feedback. Give over. But, yeah. yeah, that's ridiculous. Yeah. No, I, I, I shouldn't say I enjoy it, but it's, you're always, you know, very, uh, like upfront with your feelings in these rants that you do. And it's, it's it, completely understandable. Like some of that stuff, like what you just described completely ridiculous. Yeah. Um, just, you know, I think you've talked about getting claimed for just playing a chord progression. Yeah. I got a claim for a like ball blues. Yeah. 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 It's just ridiculous. It is. It's, it's very broken. That, that, that side of YouTube is very broken. Yeah. And it's bonkers as well because it's free promotion for them, and they don't even seem to realise that. I've got, I've got no, right. I've got no problem with kind of artists like you know, like the Chili Peppers receiving royalties from if I played one of their songs, but I wasn't playing their songs. I was teaching their songs and and showing like you know how cool this part of this song is, and 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 you know how cool it is to play and how it feels, and like you know how to get inside the mind of someone like john and it, it just makes me feel like well if, it, if you're gonna if you're gonna copyright claim all that stuff where's the limit yeah because it keeps going you know it, it, there, 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 there's no limit to what these people their greed and what they can take like you know it's like well that sells that sells that sells even fair use doesn't seem to kind of like matter to them anymore so it's like well this is great <laughs> yeah yeah it's uh it's a real shame because you know people like you are like you said they're you're you're promoting them in a way and you know right. the way that times have changed like communities are are, are being built on this type of content and you know? and it's not it's not doing anything to take away from them like you said and, mm, exactly and, i'm i'm sure and you, 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 you yeah and you should be able to be compensated for that because it's you know it it takes a lot of time and effort like you said to film something to edit it and it's yeah. yeah. It's really a shame that that it's it's not become it's become not worth it for you to do the Chili Peppers stuff. Because... Yeah, yeah. Because it, it really, really, really upset me when all of a sudden it real I realized one day it's like well I can't play Chili Pepper songs anymore and I can't really do much on the John side of things because uh, in the, I mean in the, in the videos I spoke a lot about his techniques and I kind of covered everything that I kind of felt you need to kind of like know. But what I wanted to do then was take all those techniques I had taught in the early videos, like certain kind of like things that John will do, and put them into context of teaching songs. And that's, you know, that's where I felt that kind of like, you know, the, the, the techniques will start to make sense. I just didn't get very far with it. I, I got like snow and down in California, uh, which I got one mm -hmm. bit wrong and it haunts me every day. Um, um, oh, really? Yeah, I got one bit wrong in the solo and it drives me crazy because... It was like uh, this brain fog where I, I'd been filming, and instead of going to the fifth fret, I said you go to the third, the third fret on the doe on the dan 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 dan, and I was like, "That's the wrong bit," and I filmed it. I didn't notice till years later. I was like, "Oh my god!" So I'm going to do an amendment to that one day if I if I'm allowed. But right, right, yeah. But done a couple. I, I think it. I I don't know if it's your fault, but I I found that. Like, I was playing it wrong at some point too for years, and then realized like listening to it, like, oh, like that's that's not what he's doing there. He's doing this other thing, and yeah, you know, sometimes sometimes that happens. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's really interesting when it does. If like if it's something like that, like I had you know practice that solo so many times, and like it's really it's not good if you ingrain it the wrong way, and then you try and change that. Indeed. Like, I was just watching um, Red Hot Chili Riffs cover of can't stop yeah. and i noticed i had and i had i had seen this years before in a tab and i didn't really understand it because i guess i can play it right but when he when he goes to the the second chord in the riff i think it's a d mm -hmm. he's playing the open d string uh i noticed when he did it and i was like oh that sounds way better than playing like the fretted note uh, yeah on the fifth fret and since then, since I watched that video, I've been trying to play it that way, and I'm like, need to like relearn my, you know, trying to get that muting. Uh, yeah. It's tricky. It is. Yeah. It, I'm getting a little better now. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I say that the thing we can't stop yeah. that. That was how it started for me. It's like I started. I started in just kind of going. 
And I was like, right, I'll, I'll get that right. And eventually, hopefully one day, it'll, the rest will follow through. And it, it does eventually. It's just, it just, yeah, it's, yeah. There's, there's no, there's never any shortcuts with an instrument. It's, it's always just hours and hours of doing it. And then it, it gives you things. Yeah, repetition. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that was uh, something I wanted to ask you about too, practice, because I saw someone just recently, I think commented on your post today. I just saw you picture. Is that the guitar uh, that you posted? The uh, picture yes. today? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah somebody asked me cool, what nice. like, practice regimes were because they were yeah, just learning yeah. songs. Yeah. And it's, that's, that's all it's I did just... know. I, I, I never sat, I, I, I never sat down to practice. It's not practice. I, I love the guitar too much. Practice implies there's some kind of, I don't have any discipline uh, when it comes out to that thing. So I right. was like, I don't really have a regime. I just sit down and I play the guitar. And all I did when I first started playing was I learned songs. Um, and I learned solos, note for note. And things just gradually progressed from, from there. But I never really sit down to practice. Like, you know, like I'm going to do 10 minutes now on chord theory, 10 minutes on improvisation, and 15 minutes on whatever. I, I It's just my brain doesn't work that way. Um yeah, uh, I I I learn by doing, not by s- studying. I'm not an, I'm not academic. I'm I'm not. Yeah, you know, my brain doesn't work that way. So I just learn songs and learn to play them, and then natural curiosity got the better of me of like, well, how does this work, and how can I make my own solo of this? Just went from there, right. from there to there, really. Right. Yeah, it makes more sense to do it that way because it's going to be fun. Like, and if it's not fun, like you said, you know, yeah, you don't know what practice is or whatever. Yeah. Like, you know, if it's not fun, you're not going to keep doing it. And you yeah. know, may, maybe for maybe for some people, they could do that, like ten minutes of this, ten minutes of that. And yeah. I think I've tried a few times to do that kind of thing, but it's uh, you know, I find like I've mostly done the same thing, like try and try and learn songs and yeah. you know, be critical of yourself. Like, I, I think you, you could, you know, if you're feeling like stuck, like you're plateauing, maybe it's because you're satisfied with just, you know, learning it uh, enough to get by and play it. Um, yeah. but, but so there, like, what advice would you have for someone to make the most out of like learning songs? Like th- there's probably some things that you've picked up along the way that maybe you wish you'd in- implemented sooner, just about your approach, that kind um, of thing. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, learn what you want. Um, one one thing yeah. I got kind of swallowed up in when I first started playing guitar was learning what people expected me to learn, and not what I necessarily wanted to learn. And and as a result of that, you end up learning all these songs that you end up kind of like you waste a lot. Of, like I wasted a lot of my time when I first started playing guitar learning songs that other people wanted uh, or expected me to be able to play. Like you know. Um, like there was certain Guns N' Roses songs, certain guitar solos, like Avenged Sevenfold songs, and I, it's not really my kind of music, and not really my kind of not. Re- I wanted to I, literally all I wanted to do was sit with a guitar and learn to play Chili Pepper songs and Don Shanty songs and Jimi Hendrix songs. I didn't care about anything else, but I learned other stuff because I felt pressured into doing it. And one thing I learned as I kind of got on with the guitar was more and more was like. I don't want to do that anymore. I just want to learn what I want to learn. I want to play what I want to play and develop my own kind of way of playing through that. So basically, I, I always I always tell people, just learn what you want to learn. If you, if you just want to sit in your house or go out live playing ACDC songs for the rest of your life, do that. You know, it's not wrong and you're, yeah. not, you're, not, you're not stupid or an idiot like some people will tell you for doing that, you know. People say to me all the time, "Don't you think your obsession with jump shot is negative?" No, <laughs> not. It's got me where I am. You know, I'm I'm obsessed with yeah. his way of playing and his sound and this and the other. And it's like I'm not. What part of that would be a negative? You know, it's it's got me here. So that car, you know, it's all positives, and that's all thanks to John you, and his influence yeah. well, on you're, me. You're definitely you're definitely not the only one either. Yeah. So I I don't know what it is why why people don't understand that approach or, or yeah. why anyone even cares to comment on what somebody else likes. Uh, I don't know why there's so much of that in the guitar community. Yeah. 
I mean, I guess it's not limited to the guitar community. You're going to find that elsewhere too, but Indeed. people just like to hate and it's, it's kind they of do. sad. Yeah. I recently, I recently come across this new trend because I'm a solid state amp guy as well. I, I recently come across this new trend that people are saying that it's now universally, uh, universally accepted that if you want to use a fuzz pedal, a solid state amp won't accept fuzz pedals and you need a valve amp. And I was just like, oh my God, I'm going to kill myself. Um, this is just okay. stupidity. So I, I did a video the other day proving it. No, you can use a, a size amp with a fuzz pedal. It's not limited to just valve. But but yeah, I mean, I, I've been told a million times in my career that like, you know, I'm not a real guitarist because I use solid state amps and cheap gear. And because I don't conform to the norms of like, you know, it's got to be this, it's got to be that, it's got to be the other. And, you know, you don't look right and you don't play right. And your obsession with John Fashanti is uh, a negative. No, it's a negative to you. To me, it's an absolute right. positive. It's a negative to you because you don't like it or you don't like him. In which case, what has what you've got to say got any bearing on my life? If you don't like it, that's fine. But go away with your opinion because I'm not going to change just because you don't like it. It's weird. Yeah. It's, it doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, and, no, I, well, I I completely agree with your point of view. And, uh, and I'm glad that you you like what you like and you're fine with that like yeah. and i don't i don't understand the whole thing about tubes and this or that like people just like to repeat things that they heard or read on the forums and yeah it's just a big echo chamber unfortunately definitely definitely I, it is i mean there's there's so, there's so much stuff out there and and a lot of it's very dangerous for new uh up and coming guitarists and stuff like that yeah Especially when people are saying, oh, you shouldn't do that, you should do this, you need to learn this, you need to learn that. Where people should be able to learn what they want to learn and play what they want to play without fear of backlash. You know, it shouldn't be a case of, like, you know, you, 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 you know, or you can play ACDC, you must be rubbish. Because there's that thing of, like, you know, Angus Young is very easy. You know, it's like, it's not easy. Have you ever tried doing that and while duck walking across the stage? Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's that thing. It drives me up a wall of like, you know, don't belittle people just because they love something that maybe you don't, you know, if, and, and you know, if, if, if your, if your hero's Jimi Hendrix and then somebody had says, oh, I hate Jimi Hendrix. Fair enough. I don't care. I don't care if you hate Jimi Hendrix. I love him. And as a yeah. result of that, if you hate him, that's fine by me. You, you. You do what you do, I do what I do. But what I don't like is when people are either like, you know, they try and force their opinion on why you should hate somebody or why you should love somebody. You should love this guy because of, or you should hate this guy because of, or... And it's like, well, at that point, your argument has lost all its power because you're now bullying people into believing what you want them to believe. And if you've got to do that, if you've got to bully yeah. people into believing something, then yeah, well, yeah, it's silly. Like you can't, you you know, you can't decide someone else's taste. No, exactly. Like, who, who, who cares? Exactly. Like, it's like it's it's like going. It's like oh, I really love eating Mars bars. I don't think you should eat Mars bars anymore. Okay. It's like what? <laughs> it's like, why? Why would you do that to yourself? Do yeah. do you? It's your life. It's not their life. Yeah. Yeah, if it annoys them, that's yeah. their problem. It's not yours. Yeah, exactly. I I want to step back a bit and yeah. and go back to like you were saying. Uh, you were you were feeling pressured to learn like certain songs or certain type of music that you weren't necessarily interested in. Where was that pressure coming from? Uh, it was a circle of people I was around. Really, um, there was a lot of uh, when I first started playing guitar in two thousand and two. There was a lot of other guitarists around around me in the circle I was in. They were all into different things. It was all all kind of thing of like, oh, can you play this? You, you'd get asked at like house parties as well, which I very rarely went to. As soon as I found the guitar, I just kind of like quit being. I'm not very good at being social. I don't. I, I like people <clears throat> terrify me. Um, like I'm I'm generally terrified of human beings and as a result I tend to stay out of the way a lot and uh, I would go to these parties because I was like you know I don't really know what else to do this is 
again, the chosen norm right. was to do that kind of thing. I was 15, 16 years old. And there was all this, always this kind of thing of like, you know, oh, can you play tribute by Tenacious D? Or can you play this song? Or can you play Papa Roach and this and the other? And I'd go out away because I didn't want to upset or disappoint people who asked me, can you play this song? I wanted to be able to play it for them. So I'd go out away and, and learn it. But then I'd have to put, put, push myself to learn it and then force myself to remember it. And it, it was always very, it just put pressure on me that I was like, this is stupid. You know, why yeah. am I doing this? So eventually it got to a point of like, oh, can you play this Papa Rose song? I'm like, no, don't know it. Yeah. And, and, there's, and there's no, and sometimes you get people saying like, well, what, what, how, well, what good are you there if you don't know that song? But again, that's their problem. That's not yours. You know, you do you, do you. it's your life. It's, you know, if, they, if they're going to hate you because you don't know how to play Last Resort by Papa Roach because you don't like it, you know, that's their problem. You know, you just, you do, you get on with your life and you let them, be moody in the corner it's it's their issue right right but i imagine if you know like you said you're you're feeling that sort of social pressure yeah. like as a 15 16 year old kid that that's sort of tough especially if you're just you know like you're going through this i think about high school uh, now looking back at it you know right. 15 16 years later and it's like that was a weird time and like yeah you don't know who you are you you know like i i acted very strange uh as did I think everyone else, but you're 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 really trying to figure out like how do I act around other people? What should I do? What do I care about? You know what's important and yeah. So it's 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 good that you have that perspective now, obviously. Mm. Um, and like you've already expressed sort of your concern for those like new up and coming guitar players, and mm. not that the, that those are always going to be adolescents, but when you're first starting out, like you. You sort of want some social uh, approval, I guess. Yeah. Like yeah. you want someone to say like, you know, oh, that's good or, you know. Yeah. You, you, you do. Sort of, you, right. I, I, seek, I seek that a lot more at the beginning than I do now. Um, it does. It, it be, so, you know. Yeah, sorry. I was just going to say, it makes sense for you to give in to that a little bit, you know, in those first couple of years. Yeah, definitely. It, it, it is a bit of a, um, it becomes a bit of a crux to you and eventually eventually you do it's like anything the older you, the older you get the less you care uh about <laughs> certain things like that because you realize that don't, it doesn't matter it's, it's you know you, you're not you know you it's, if you love music you love music if you love the guitar you love the guitar and you're invariably getting you know people get into it for their own reasons why they may be but at the end of the day you've got to be happy doing it you don't want to be kind of like putting yourself into a situation where you, it, it's a struggle because he just that'll kill it. You don't you don't want it to be killed for you. You want to be able to love it and enjoy it, and um, it, it's just it's not worth the stress of trying to impress people. Impressing people is is dull. Um, music isn't about that either way. I, I get I get so sick of people say, "Well, what can you play that's impressive?" Like, well, here you go. He's impressive. That's impressive. Um, because it's not about impressive. It's not about like you know what can I, yeah. John spoke about it before, like the whole idea of like you know it's not about going. What can I? You now I can show off and what can I do with this piece of wood with wires in it? It's it's about making music right. as a whole. In general, it's not about that kind of thing. And and the pressure to conform and and you've got to be able to play like Slash and Ingvay Malmsteen and Steve Vai. And you've got to be able to play for the love of God and Far Beyond the Sun perfectly and got to be able to shred and blah, blah, blah. it's 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 all nonsense and it doesn't mean anything if you don't want to do it you know it, it, you do what you want to do i always keep going back to that but um if you yeah. don't want to play like king bay malmstein you've got no desire to do it don't do it you don't feel the pressure to keep up with the latest instagram youtube trend of i've got to play as fast as possible or i've got to play like john mayer because that'll make you know that'll make this and the other it's like you know, it's it's not important. You know, just stay true to what you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're doing a good job of affirming me <laughs> to keep just playing Chili Pepper songs. Yes, yeah. That's pretty much it's pretty much all I do, man. Yeah, I'd say, I, I love it. I, I, there isn't a day goes by where I don't play Scar Tissue at some point or something. John Rudd, yeah. It's like I always end up going back to it. Yeah, like I. 
at some point early on, I, I played some other stuff, but when I really started taking it seriously, it was just like, I'm going to learn how to play these Chili Pepper songs. And, really? you know, that's when I started getting into his gear and pedals and this, that, and one thing leads to another. And, you, you know, I'm still doing the same thing five, six years later. And yeah. I haven't really found the, I don't have the same motivation to learn someone else's songs. And I keep thinking like, you know, maybe I'll get there someday. Right. I feel like there's still a wealth of stuff to take away and learn from, from John stuff. Like you were talking about starting off your series, teaching techniques. Um, and when I was first learning the songs, I found like, cause I was really starting from like not knowing how to play any songs. I, yeah. I, I learned guitar a little bit in high school, maybe to the point where I could kind of play a bar chord and yeah. then just like n- didn't really touch the guitar until I was about 25 when I started to play again. So I didn't know how to play any songs. It was just like, you know, learn this Chili Pepper song and I would learn a, a technique like, you know, how to do the little diddly dumb on the chord thing, the yeah. Hendrix thing. And then you learn another song and you learn another technique from that. And then all of a sudden you start adding up these techniques and it's like, well, I kind of already learned how to do that in this other song that I know I can do it here. It's like makes it easier. Yeah. So to go all the way around, like you said, learning songs is a good way to practice and, you know, just keep keep doing that if that's what feels good. Yeah. 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 And it, and it, pro- it puts what you learn into a practical context because you can sit there all day and read a book on how to play like John, Jimmy, uh, whoever else, but if you're not going to put it into practical use, then yeah, it, it's it's wasted. There's a reason it's called fear. Um, you know, practicality is is everything. Actually, kind of like going, well, if I do this, what does it do? And if I do that, what does it do? And what does it sound like? And what does it emote? Or what does it say? Or to me? Or or, or whatever? And how does it affect things? And yeah, like you say, you, you just start developing this kind of like little book inside yourself of all these little techniques and things that eventually it becomes you you know you, you eventually the, start stepping outside of the the world um of your heroes and you start kind of stepping outside of that into kind of like you know going well what happens when i combine this lick of rory gallagher to this lick of john prashanti what happens when i get these two blended together and then i'll throw a uh, bit of you know Mike McCready from Pearl Jam in there and then bit Jimi Hendrix and all of a sudden you got this melting pot of uh guitarists and you know and then you're just like you know, oh that's that's new what's that one what's that one and then you, you start to develop your own little you know your own little voice but it, it has yeah. to happen naturally and, and I can't stand this concept and it happens or again in guitar communities of like oh, you shouldn't have influences who's influenced you to say that you know, because uh, you know, human yeah. beings are influenced constantly. We are influential beings. That's that's what we do. You know, if you hear something, yeah. read something, see something that you like, you're going to be influenced by it. There's nothing you can do about that. Anybody who goes through a life not being influenced by something must be a weird person. Um, because I don't think it is. I mean, yeah. it's it's all it's all that we are. We're just like yeah. you know, regurgitating yeah our surroundings uh, exactly yeah. yeah. It's really silly. It's it really is. silly the things people say. You should never do this. You should never do that. You shouldn't learn theory because it'll take away your creativity. It's oh, like, that one. <laughs> just, just you. How about you do that and see how it goes? Yeah, exactly. I yeah, it's like I, I can't. It's like theory to an extent. Yes, it it can become again another crux if you're not careful. For you, if you if you yeah. You have to be careful how much you learn. I remember learning like super Locrian modes and and whole tone scales and how to use them and, and all this kind of thing. And none of it ever stuck because in how I wanted to play, it was totally pointless and irrelevant. I'm never going to need it in how I play. Um, so it just went away. So if somebody said, oh, can you do this? I'm like, blah, blah, blah. I used to be able to. Because I, I remember at one point I could eight finger tap as well. Um and I used to be able to sweep pick, and I can't do any of that anymore. It, it, you know, if somebody put a gun to my head and asked me to sweep pick, yeah, I'm going to get shot uh, because I can't do it. But that's fine because it was yeah. never what I wanted out of the guitar anyway. Um, it wasn't. It took a long time. It wasn't about until about 2008 
that I started to really understand what I wanted, how I wanted to play and what I wanted to play. And again, um, for the longest time, I started, I, I, step, I started to step away from Joel and Jimmy. And, and then eventually I, I came back to it going, no, but I want to do what they did, which is just unconscious playing. And they just play how they feel. And they're in it for music because they love music. They're not in it to show off. They're not in it to, you know, be the next big thing or something. You know, they're in it because they just love music. And I was like, yeah. that was me. And I was like, that's why I love it. You know, that's why I love the guitar. And I have this ability to play this thing. And that's all that matters, you know, is, is, and, and how can I make the best music that can not only help me, but help others? Um, cause I always find music for me is, is the big healer. So, my job and goal then became how do I get the ability to help myself with this by playing music and also how can I get through to others who might need help as well so because you know John's music can it, it, it saved me from a, some horrible places yeah I, I agree with all of them man like I think that's the thing that I like about the Chili Peppers the most is that somehow they've been able to sustain that, like just creating music from a place of just wanting to. Like I like that thing that Flea says in, uh, I think it's a Funky Monks documentary where he's talking about if you're into these sort of rock cliches and this and that, you, you know, you wouldn't make a good Red Hot Chili Pepper. But if you just love music and especially funk music, yeah. you know, then you could be a Red Hot Chili Pepper. Exactly. And uh, I always yeah. think I always think about that. But when you were talking about, you know, picking up things like, I'm going to take this from John, I'm going to take this from Mike McCready and Hendrix and this right. and that. Like, that, that's what you get from learning those songs and playing them and then practicing, like, what like what they're doing in a solo, like, taking it a step further. Like, I'm sure you've learned lots of John's live solos. Mm. And that's kind of where I'm starting to go, too. And now I'm getting to the point a little bit, like, you know, I always have a hard time remembering, like, Oh, like these are the five pentatonic positions. Like I usually would get stuck in the box when I start thinking about it that way. Yeah. But now that I've, you know, learned a number of his solos and then start doing like, you know, live versions of what's in or something like that. It's like, I can kind of see where that stuff fits in now to the framework of, uh, of the scale shape, you know? Yeah. And yeah. like, see the story that he's telling it's cause it's usually the same. He usually sort of starts in the same place. Maybe it's different that then kind of goes, goes down, goes back up. And, you know, I I like that now I can sort of take that and just sort of feel something, yeah. you know, I can't always get, I can't always get to that space no. uh, where I'm really feeling it, but when I can, it feels good. And I feel like the more you do it, the the easier it is to access that. Um, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that, 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 let's again, that, like you say, that, that, that space, um, I totally understand what you mean about that, because but the thing is, I, I I think it'd be I think it's impossible to get to that place every time anyway, regardless of your level of of playing. I, 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 yeah. like Jimi Hendrix, um, you read some of the stories about Jimmy, and like he would sometimes come off the stage absolutely in a rage because he wasn't able to get to the level he wanted to get to that night you know he maybe maybe he got right. there the night before and then the night after that he was a bit tired maybe he couldn't do it maybe the amps were playing up his guitar wasn't right whatever it was and he couldn't get back to that place and i think as a musician it's uh it's a frustrating thing because once you yeah. get there once you're like i love it there. And, you know everything makes sense yeah. there it's a really lovely place to be and you just try and get back there all the time and music comes along and basically says well no you can't do that we we can't have you there all the time you only you only get to stop in you know x amount of times before we say no you have to step out the door for a while because somebody else has to be in here or that person has to be in or you just have to take a break and um i always feel like you know music knows best at the end of the day and 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 we we right. we are literally just marionettes to it. We are. It's got hold of our strings, so we can play these strings. Wow, that's cliche. Um, but um, but like um, but that's how I feel. Like I because I, I, I don't feel 
particularly in control of playing while I play and I like that more than well I, I feel like I'm in control of it I'm fighting against music and it kind of wants to come through like naturally and unconsciously so the more unconscious I mm. can be to it and the, the less I think and the less I kind of like focus on what I'm doing and just let music do what it wants to do the better it'll be but unfortunately there are some times where you pick up guitar and it's like I've got to be able to do this and then music kind of starts fighting you and eventually you kind of like oh, no, I've got to be able to put this thing in and it just becomes a mess and it it's, really, it's just not the way <laughs> that's like and that's when it boots you out the club and goes no come back in a bit when you've learned right yeah no that's it's it's really good to hear you say that and like I I never heard someone say that type of thing about Jimi Hendrix before like I, I don't know I don't uh, at least I don't think so anyways and it, it makes me feel better actually because <laughs> uh, you know I've been really struggling with that like the 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 past even just like week or so <laughs> because I had I've been jamming with some guys lately we were trying to get a bit of a Chili Peppers group together and I played with them this week. I played with them the week before. And the week before, like I, it was the first time we had played in a in a while. So I didn't have, I didn't have any really like expectations for this session. I was just kind of like going through the motions. I was like, yeah, it'll be, uh, it'll be whatever this time. Like we were trying to figure some stuff out, and so I just went there not expecting anything. And for whatever reason, I was just like on, and I was, you know, like doing some of the best soloing that I felt like I had ever done like in a in like a live jam situation it's like yeah. normally like I can only get to that place like if I'm playing alone by myself you know nobody's yeah. watching and I was like damn like I want to I want to keep doing that and so like the next week I'm all pumped up and uh for whatever reason <laughs> man my my hand is just like tight I I'm I'm overthinking I'm like and just nothing is coming out right and Right. No matter what I do, I'm like, I, I couldn't, you know, there, there were some okay moments, but it's just like, what? Like yeah. the only thing I can think of that was the difference was like the one week I like really didn't care. And the next week I was like kind of trying to make it happen. Yeah. But I, I don't know, like that's, that's just my brain trying to make sense of it. Like there's so many things that are unconscious, subconscious, like, I don't know. Like you said, some days it's just not meant to happen and. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I've tried to get in the habit of, you know, if if I'm trying to play guitar, practice today, and I'm just not feeling it, maybe it's best to just to just put it down. It's okay, yeah. you know. It is, and, and that is that's that's a discipline in itself because it can't happen every day. You can't be, you can't like, again. If Jimi Hendrix couldn't do it every day, what chance do the rest of us mortals have? Um, yeah. Because I remember this story of Jimmy. Uh, he played the Miami Pop Festival, and he he, he did two he took two uh, two sets at Miami Pop Festival. One was in the day, and one was at night. And um, for whatever reason, the Hendrix Estate decided to release the evening set uh, where everything went wrong, and the day set went perfectly. And there's 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 I think there's Foxy Lady on YouTube. Hendrix Estate like to just slam down on Jimmy's music as much as possible, which is really stupid, but. Um, Jimmy's first set, set during the day went flawlessly. The amps were behaving, his guitar was behaving, and he was he was on it, absolutely on it. And then it was either that night or the next day evening he he played he played again, and he blew one of his marshals in the first fifteen minutes. He just blew, and you can hear it go. His guitar won't stay in tune. The low E string keeps popping out, but no, he can't keep the guitar controlled he can't control the pedals keep breaking everything's going wrong for him and you just hear he's playing and it, it's just you can hear him pushing and trying to make the magic happen he's trying to get to that point so he can entertain these people and give them Jimi hendrix and he's trying so hard and he gets so angry and you can hear his anger coming out on the guitar because the guitar won't stay in tune and guessing his humidity up to it or whatever and he just gives up. He, he almost gives up. And it wasn't uncommon for Jimmy to just walk off stage at some gigs where he was like, I can't do it. I can't give these people what they want. And sometimes he would get booed for it. And, and I think it, it's simply because it, it's it's hard 
to constantly be at that you well you can't you can't be at that level all the time i think it's why a lot of musicians and again i hate to say it but they turn to drugs and it's understandable because it's like you know jimmy did it he, he turned to acid and lsd because that way you could almost fake it every night you know you could push yourself to that limit because your body's pushed to a limit but it will come back and you have to pay for that at some point um but it's so sad i mean they would push you know a lot of these missions pushed themselves to their absolute limits and jimmy was one of them and you know it's no wonder he kind of like struggled so much on stage and there's, there's footage of him at the royal Albert hall where he's giving the crowd what he can and there's a stage invasion and the last footage is of him crying backstage because he's like well this isn't what it's supposed to be about you know i don't you know music isn't about that, that kind of chaos it's about this and it's, it's just upsetting to see him mm. and it, it's it's not it's not it's not it's not needed you know and but again you can't always get to that place unconsciously sadly sometimes your brain gets in you have to suffer through it, you know, as as a player um, of whatever instrument, or as even as you know, an artist, a, paint, a painter, or or whatever, you know, building a house, you know, if you if you're a if you're a brickie or whatever, it's sometimes ain't your day, and yeah, it's, it's just the way yeah. it is. Yeah, and that's that's got to be okay. Mm. Just keep keep doing it though, because mm. you know, yeah. You'll, you'll you'll get back there at some point. Exactly. You're you're allowed to have bad days. You're allowed to play like crap. Yeah. It's fine. You're allowed to do. That. You're allowed to make mistakes. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. I think the hard thing is, like, at least the way I feel about it personally is, I don't, I don't spend as much time concentrating on, like, the good feelings when things are going well, but when things start to go bad. It's like, that's what I start to identify with personally. That's what I start to really like think about over and over again. Where like, like, oh, why can't I get, why doesn't it sound right? It doesn't feel right today. Like I butchered that solo. I suck. Like that's the stuff I think about the most. And, yeah. uh, and I really want to stop that, but it's, yeah. it's hard. It is. I, I think back again, um, human beings i think are designed to do that well i think uh not all of us um i think some people are uh, who have maybe a little bit too much in the ego side uh, the people i've met on the ego side they don't do that they just think that everything they do is great even when it's garbage um yeah. whereas a lot of musicians are met, like you know the, yeah, the really good musicians the really creative musicians they all have crisis they have crisis every day like, you're like that's not good enough that's not good enough or one thing will happen they could play the most amazing guitar solo drum solo bass solo whatever violin solo and they'll hit one bum note in like you know in a, in a five minute piece they'll hit one note that wasn't quite good and they will dwell on that one note forever and ever and ever and be just like oh I'm totally rubbish I can't do this I can't do this and I think it's okay to acknowledge acknowledge that but you need to be aware of how destructive that can be to to you, uh, and, and it's dangerous to your psyche to yeah, kind of I, like go down the route of constantly destroying yourself. It, it's okay to be humble. It's great. It's great to be humble in the fact of like you know you, you you need to know that you know nothing to get better. You know none of us know everything, and we're going to be on this learning route for the rest of our lives. You know we're never going to not be learning one thing or another, but you don't grow and progress uh, in, in anything by punishing yourself. Um, it's okay to be critical and be, you know, go, well, that wasn't good enough. But when it's like, oh, I'm rubbish, I'm rubbish, I'm rubbish, and, you, you know, you, you go from one thing to another, that's when things start to get in the way. And and we've all got our demons in that way. I, I'm yeah. Again, I'm going for punishment. I do it all the time where people somebody will say oh i really enjoyed this and i'm like no it's rubbish i didn't do well enough it wasn't good enough i didn't do enough i didn't do enough and um yeah everyone i think you know musicians i think probably the worst for it you know <laughs> where it's like oh, this is all this is all crap i'm rubbish i shouldn't be doing this i'm gonna give up we're so dramatic but um but yeah. i think 
I, 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 there is, I reckon there's a lot of, um, and I, I, but again, I think there's a lot of, I think it's a good thing in a way because it means we're never happy. We're never satisfied. We're not, we're not content with it just being okay. You know, we want it to be the best it can be. And we will push ourselves yeah. to that absolute limit to get it, you know, and I think that's important. I think that's the important part of it. The destructive side, no. But pushing yourself to your absolute limit every time you pick up an instrument, even if it's not happening, is good. But you you, you can't be too hard on yourself. It's not an easy thing to do. And again, it's just accepting and understanding that you can't be there all the time. You can't be brilliant all the time. It's not possible. Yeah. That's like... This really right. sums up how I've been feeling for the last couple of weeks. Like, yeah. it's, uh, you know, you're absolutely right. Like, the destructive part is not going to help. So, yeah. hopefully, hopefully we can find a way to minimize that, find the balance. But I, I, I do, I do like that I'm of the mind. Like you're saying, like I'm not, I'm not the type of person to be satisfied. I'm going to, I'm going to focus on that one little thing that I messed up, part, hey. you know, opposed to the 99% that was good. Um, I like, I like being that person, hey. but, but it, it comes, it comes at a cost. And, uh, yeah, that's something I, I hope I can improve on. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't doubt it. I mean, it's, it's all just, it's all just growth and everyone does it everyone does it everyone gets there and again you said it earlier on it's about finding the balance and it, it, everyone's balance yeah. is different and you've got to find yours and uh once you find it you've got to maintain it which is a job in itself um but it is doable you know it is doable and just to learn to be a bit nicer to yourself and and understand that if you did a solo and it wasn't as good as you wanted it to be it is what it is. It's fine, you know, because the next time you do it, yeah, it might be amazing. You know, yeah. um, just accepting the fact of like, you know, some nights you are going to be crap. You know, you can't pick up an instrument every day and just be the best musician in the world. It doesn't work that way. You know, we're 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 fleshy bone bags with with problems. You know, we 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 can't be on it all <laughs> the time. You know, there has there has to be crap days and again you yeah know, if it wasn't crap days you will know what good days was yeah yeah exactly yeah it's uh it makes me think about john saying the same thing about the soloing like you know it doesn't make any sense to think about it if you played a bad solo because then you're you're going back you're living in the past basically yeah, exactly but you know like you said we're what was it? Fleshy meat bags? Fleshy viral problems. Bags. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're uh you know it's it's uh it's hard for us not to think, you know, think about the past, worry about the past, yeah, be anxious about the future. Mm. The the bad thing though is like the more we do that, the less we're actually living uh, in the present exactly. moment. And yeah. I think like that's what it comes down to when it comes to you know, being in the zone sort of or whatever you want to call it. Like, because when I get to that place, I feel, you know, if I'm improvising or something, even if I'm playing something I already know, there's just sometimes where you feel like you're right on top of it. But there's other times where, you know, I feel like I'm playing catch up or, yeah. you know, I'm not quite where I'm, I'm not there, you know, really? in the pocket or whatever you want to say. But when I, you know, when I do get there, it feels like I'm like right on it. I I know kind of what's going to happen next, but I also like I'm aware of what's happening right now. Yeah. And you get that sort of predictive hearing a little bit. Like, yeah, that's what, that's what I like. And, uh, yeah. <clears throat> then again, yeah. it, it can't, if it happened every time, you, yeah. you wouldn't appreciate it. You know, it, it's like anything. Yeah. It's like, like any, like. It's like having a really good meal one evening. If you, if you went out and it was amazing, if if everything you have every day is amazing, everything's amazing, you would never know what bad is. And I think we need to know what bad is, so we know what good is, and so and also yeah. we need to make mistakes so we know how to fix them. Um, like I say, if, if everything was perfect, it kind of like defies the point of everything. Yeah. Flaws. Yeah, and, if it was, 
if it was perfect and it was the same quality every time, then then it would just be average. Yeah. What's the point? Yeah. You know, right? Like yeah. It's yeah. It, it's I always yeah, this think is, this I, is good. Yeah, I always think of like people who can do things perfectly every time. It's like well, there's no challenge. And 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 people can't do it every time. It, it's impossible. Even people like Steve Vai and people like this are insane. They will they will make mistakes. You can't see them because they hide them so well. But there, there there is a level that again, being human beings, we're not robots. We can't do things perfectly. You know, there's always mm-hmm. going to be a flaw, one way or another. You know, and and it's okay. There's so much emphasis yep. put on in this day and age of everything has to be perfect. You need the right lighting in videos. You need to be playing the right thing. You need to be able to play it perfectly. And you need to sound a certain way and sound the other. And it's like, no, <laughs> stop with that. You know, I like imperfections. I like when things go a bit awry and you've got to kind of like dig yourself back out of the hole. It's okay to be a bit off. You know, or it's okay to be, uh, you know, sometimes it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Do you think that, uh, like, that mentality comes across in your approach to what you do, like, in terms of even just making your videos and your guitar playing? I hope so. I mean, I again, being my own worst enemy, I uh, think that everything I do is garbage. Um, it doesn't matter what I do or no matter how many people say they like it, to me, it's never good enough. It's never that isn't good enough you need to try harder you need to try harder to a point where i've been doing videos or i've been doing playing i'll push myself to a point where i'll almost at the end of it black out because i've pushed myself to an absolute limit of exhaustion either mentally or physically or both um where i'm just kind of like i just kind of like start woozing out and i'll, I'll, I'll struggle because again and i don't allow myself Again, I'm trying to get better at it, but I don't really allow myself leeway. Everything I do isn't good enough, so he needs to be better next time. You need to try harder. But hopefully, I can kind of again. I could, I, I I think like a lot of people, we're all very good at giving advice, but we're absolutely terrible at taking our own advice. So we end up as kind of like, you should right. do this. That's really good advice. Are you going to do it? I'm just going to keep ruining myself. Um, and torturing it's... myself over these little things that I told you not to worry about, but I'm going to worry about. It gets silly, really does. Yeah. But yeah, we are our own. Wor- I think we are our own worst enemies at the end of the day, in general. So, but we- certainly, yeah, we need to learn. All right, I I imagine you get a lot of good feedback though from your audience. Mm-hmm. I do. Right? It's in the the, the the support I get is. It, on a daily basis blows my mind people are amazing they really are and the amount of support that I've got throughout my life on YouTube and as a musician in general like and in my life in general it, it blows my mind I'm, I'm still terrified of human beings I always will be but that's my own reasons um, the... but the amount of support I get from people and the, the, what what people what I'll, I'll play something and it, it can mean something to somebody so profoundly that I can't, that's nothing to be snuffed at or I'll take for granted. Like, you know, when, when somebody says like, you know, I was having a bad day, but your guitar playing got me through it. It's like at that point in time, I'm like, well, I've done something good. And then it re- then it dawns on me that like every time I play guitar, it isn't necessarily for me what I play. You know, I could play something and think, that was okay or that was terrible but to somebody else it could make them feel less alone if they feel lonely or happy when they feel sad or yeah. whatever or com- com- comfort them and that it, it dawned on me a while back so like say every time you pick up a guitar it might not be for you today you know and you might not understand it and you might fight with that concept of like seeing like, why can't I do this it's because music <laughs> isn't aiming at you it's aiming at that person over there who needs it way more than you do and uh, it's just using you as a conduit to get it out to them, because it knows it can it can pull your strings and manipulate you to do the little dance it needs you to do to get to this person to help them. What a cool opportunity to have, man! No, no, no. Um, I've 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 risen a day goes by where I don't feel honoured 
<laughs> to be able to play the guitar. I, uh, it's literally the best thing I've ever done in my life. It really is. Yeah, I think it. I think it comes across like I. Uh, I regrettably haven't kept up with your videos as much. Like I don't have as much time to spend on YouTube yeah. just generally. Yeah. No. Um, you know, but yeah, from what I have seen, which is you know quite a bit, like. I'm I'm coming at this uh, having never talked to you before, but just from watching your videos, like I feel like I already kind of got to know you a little bit, and I was wondering, like, do you get that sort of type of comment from people that watch your videos too? Yeah, I mean, I, I get I get it a few a few times where people feel they know me because I've been quite right. open about my life and what I go through on a daily basis. I recently had a I've recently had a very, 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 very bad time. I'm going back into therapy to help me because I've got problem, uh, problems that have risen again to the surface. And because I've been so open with it, a lot of people, they do, they, they feel like, um, they say like, you know, I've never met you, but I feel like I, I know you as a friend. And that's, that's wicked because, again, I don't really, I don't really know how to be a human. <laughs> I don't really know what that you're is. You're not the only one, man. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I, I feel like an alien. I, 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 don't, I don't know what I am most of the time. I don't really know. The... I don't know how to talk to people. I, I, I'm socially awkward to the max. And um, I struggle. Uh, again, the, the guitar speaks better than I do. It's why I always have one with me. I, I, I feel... If I don't have my guitar, it's like I'm missing a leg or, or something. I, I can't be without right. my guitars um, because they speak for me. Um, they 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 give me that ability to um, vent and be whatever it yeah, has to be at the time. But um, but no, I mean I've, I've had that a few times where people say like you know oh well. I know this about you. I know that about you. And because of that, because I've been really open in videos, certain videos, they feel like a, they feel they kind of like, you know, have a, have a bond, so to say, which is really cool. And I, 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 I like that. It's really, really cool thing. And again, yeah, it's that s sense of community, which I love, you know, I, I feel my channel is a, is a, is a, is a wicked community and I love them. Uh, they're, it's amazing. I love the interaction and yeah, I love right. the fact that, there's no real negativity and nastiness there. It, it's cruel, but it, it, it's it's a community of people who love music. You know, that's yeah. that's. There's nobody trying to one up each other or this and other. It's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I'm, that's, I'm humble. That's great, man. Yeah. Well, that's what you've created. Um, like just to add to that, what I was saying is, I feel, uh, I felt as though watching your videos, it was very. Just personal. It's like you talking. Uh, you know, they you're they were typically longer, uh, and you know, not like cut up. You know, you're not doing anything to sort of. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, but it didn't feel like you were creating something that was to be super polished. Like you're just sort of like you know, getting in front and and being yourself, and even though you say that you have a hard time talking to people like i don't think it comes across like that uh, is it is it different to talk to people like through the camera than yeah it is to talk to them in person yeah uh, uh, yeah I, I find it um due to certain reasons in in, in the, the world in general i well i find it very hard to be kind of face to face uh for whatever reason i feel very uh awkward and it's not to do with what people really? me. It's my fault. It's not their fault ever. It's always me that has this problem. And um, I, I find it a lot easier to kind of like uh, talk on camera about problems or, or, or let this thing do the talking. Um, I, when I play live, I've been playing live for 23 years. And um, I've never ever really been able to look an audience in the eye I, I i just can't do it i've been told it's a really bad habit to have it's like no it's not uh, jimmy hendrix couldn't do it yeah <laughs> jimmy jimmy couldn't do it he always looks dad who could jimmy hendrix play you look up occasionally uh, but he looks down uh, mostly he does eyeballs the microphone and that's what i do and um 
not saying I'm anywhere near Jimi Hendrix, but I kind of it's the same habit. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, but it's it's sort of thing of like I I, I again, and it, it's it's from early life. The reason I'm not comfortable around people because I'm scared a lot of the time of people. People put me on edge uh, for what for certain things I've been through in this and the other. So I I tend to be very awkward and uncomfortable because I just. I'm terrified most of the time. You know, if if I'm in a big group of people, or if I go to like a guitar show, I'm I'm in survival mode all the time. And uh, yeah, I, I've got kind of I've got to have my own ways of dealing with these things. But it's not people making me that way. It's me making me that way. Because a lot of people they're not they're not mal- malicious towards me or anything like that. I'm yeah. malicious to myself, and I I terrify myself yeah. basically. I, uh, I, I feel the same way, like maybe to a lesser extent than what you've described. Um, but I, I definitely throughout my life have always considered myself to be a little bit of like on the outside. I don't know, like don't necessarily fit into a particular group, but kind of watching from the outside and have a hard time, you know, just making small talk with people and that kind of thing. I think that's probably the biggest thing that I struggle with because I don't know. I just don't care to talk about that kind of stuff. And, uh, it, it makes it hard for me to relate to other people because, you know, if there is several people in a room, like I just tend to just kind of be the fly on the wall, you know? Yeah. I don't know if you can relate to it, but it's a, it's, it's not a comfortable feeling like what I, it's not that I don't want to talk to people, but I just feel like I don't know how sometimes. And, uh, I don't know. Uh, I just, I feel a little bit more comfortable saying this type of thing because, you know, you're so open and you can say how you feel and, I'm I'm glad that you can do that uh, on camera because it's given you such a wonderful opportunity to share, you know, what you have to share. Right. And I'm still trying to find my voice. Uh, It'll come. Cool. It will. Yeah. Because that's that's the thing. Yeah, I mean, you will you'll find a way to do it. But I, I know exactly what you mean. I, I was, I still am flying the wall. Even if I'm at, even if I'm at a family gathering my family i will sit yeah. in the corner i'll be quiet because i just don't know what to do i don't know how to relate to people um yeah. outside uh, of guitar and music um doesn't make sense so yeah I, I totally understand exactly where you're coming from and there's a million trillion yeah. people out there who are the same kind of thing well i i want to i want to talk about like i want to really get into stuff you know yeah. like, i'm i'm such a nerd uh, and you know, people, people don't want to hear me talk about like, I don't know, the clock frequency on a bucket brigade chip, you know, like, or like how a chorus pedal works. Mm. Like this is the sort of stuff that I've gotten into and, right. you know, I want, I want to talk to people about that. I want to talk to people about, you know, the nuances of guitar playing or those are just a couple things, but. You know, I think that's maybe that's part of the reason why it's easier for you to talk on the camera. It's because you can, like, it, it it's hard to bring that kind of thing up in a casual conversation. Yeah. You know, but uh, to be able to you know talk and pe- have people who actually want to listen, that, that's really exciting. Mm. Indeed, and again, that was that that was that thing of finding where you belong, your community, finding your your path in life. Because we we all walk our own. No one can walk mm-hmm. with us. Occasionally we get people pointing us when we come to a split in it, say, go that way, or you can go this way, that way, this way. Da, da, da. But we all have to walk it, and we all have to find our own way of, of fitting in and coming to terms with what and who we are. And I feel there's a lot in this day and age of people running from what they are or what they want to be because they're so desperate fit into the not I want to be seen I want to be famous or this and the other and it's like there's there's like a pressure to be the best you know anything you do is like I want to be the best you know I want to be the best guitarist I want to be the best painter I want to be the best at doing Instagram videos or whatever and it's like 
all that means nothing if you're not being true to who you want to be. If you're just trying to be... Kurt Cobain had a great line. I can't remember it exactly, but it's like, you know, trying to be somebody else is a waste of who you are. And I can't mm-hmm. think of a better way to put it. I mean, that's probably paraphrasing it, but that's it. Don't try and be what you're not. Be what you are and be proud of what you are, warts and all. You know, we're all flawed. We're all, no, nobody's perfect. No one will ever be perfect, no matter how much they try and put it out there that they are. You know, everyone's mm-hmm. got flaws. Everyone's got problems. Everyone's messed up or stupid in some way, shape, or form. And everyone has demons, whether they show it or they don't. Everyone, Everyone has certain desires and wants and wills to be this thing they can feel inside them, but they get so waylaid with social media or whatever pressures from their peers or whatever to be a certain way, they forget that. And um, it's sad that we live in a way where that's demonized. You shouldn't be that way. You shouldn't look that way. You shouldn't do that. Stop doing that. Be this. Because that's more right. And it's like, well, no. Yeah. <laughs> Ridiculous. It, it becomes confusing. Mm. Like, yeah, I don't even know. Like, sometimes I have to question what is it that I actually want yeah. because of the way that I feel pressure from other people yeah. or just, I don't know, society in general. And I don't even know what that means really, but. It's like this, I get this sort of internal struggle, like, oh, maybe I should do this, but I don't know if like I should do this because that's what I actually think is right. Or it's like, that's my interpretation of what is right that I'm getting from other people, you know? And that's something I really struggle with. Uh, And then, and then just taking another perspective of that is also my like constant comparing myself to other people that doesn't help that doesn't help either because like you mentioned earlier you're not very good at taking your own advice Uh, i feel the same kind of way like i i know i can i can tell myself that you know no person has had the same experiences that i've had so like it doesn't make sense to compare yourself like you know, if someone else is going through this problem, like that's what I would say to them. But when it comes to thinking about that and understanding it for yourself, it's very difficult yeah. because you look at other people and you're like, oh, like they're doing this or they're doing that. And I don't want to name specific things, but you think, oh, why? Maybe if I had made better choices, I could have that too. Or, you know, that's what I find myself thinking. Right. And it's like, but is that is that what you want or like you made those choices for a reason i don't know i I think it comes down to it's like you know life's hard being alive is and we're not here very long so enjoy what you can of it while you're here because it ain't always going to be there and like the like the idea of kind of like you know not it's real. I don't think humans are actually capable of living in the moment as much as they think they are. I don't think humans can actually be in a, a moment completely. I think there's always going to be a certain percentage of your being that's going to be out of it because it's going to be thinking about did I turn the washing machine off or whatever. There's always right. going to be that there because that's the way humans work. But it's your life and mistakes you make or choices you make good or bad lead you to where wherever you're going to be and wherever you are as long as you can actually kind of look around you and go kind of like you know i'm happy where i am this is this is pretty good right now i've got this i've got this i've got the other then you know that's all you need and if you're not there if you're not there if you look around and go god hate this then you have to really go you have to ask yourself a question like you said like yeah what do i want Mm. And if that is the case, what do I want? How are you going to go about getting it? Because at the end of the day, the only person who can make things happen for us is us. You know, we we can't mm-hmm. rely on other people to push us down that rabbit hole. We have to go down it ourselves and and take that risk. You know, 
waking up every day is you take a risk. You know, it's life's weird. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's a. Uh... That, that's the other thing you got to think about too, because you could, you could spend all your time thinking about, oh, like, should I go this way? Should I go this way? Like, this is a safe path. This is, mm. this is, seems like a risk to me, but there's risk associated with, you know, the safe option too. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it's different, but you know, maybe the risk is you don't, you don't actually do the thing that you want to do. And then, like you said, life is short. You're only here for, you know, you don't even know how long really. Right. So you know enjoy it if yeah just if if you're not happy hopefully you know you can make make some changes like try and get after that but at the same time like i also concern myself with am i just am i just going to be perpetually pushing happiness into the future um by saying like oh things are going to be better if i get this or things are going to be better when i accomplish this it's like Maybe I should just figure out how to be happy right now and enjoy what I have. And, Dude. You know, that that's 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 a struggle in itself. Yeah. Again, it's a job. You know, life's a job. Yeah. It's a full time job and we don't get days off from it. So it is a case yeah. of, you know, things are what they what they are. You are what you are. What's not whether you like it or you don't like it, you are what you are deep down. And if you've suppressed that it will come out one way or another. Yeah, your, your your demons or your or your angels or whatever they find the way out of you, uh, whether you like it or you don't like it. And you can express as much as you want, but it ain't gonna happen forever. But you just you just have to just do what you do, and you can't always be accepting of what you've got, what's going good, what's going bad. Yeah, it is what it is. You know, just you just yeah. everything finds a way eventually, for better for worse. But there's always bad, and there's always good. You know, it's it's this malarkey all the time. You know, things be boring if they weren't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just uh, it's harder. It's harder to remember that. When, it is when things aren't going well unfortunately it is it's, yeah it's, it's tough well hey man this is this has been great sure. thanks again for for doing this no worries uh, thanks for having me. I, I i really i really appreciate how like philosophical this conversation got because that's sort of it's sort of how i imagine like or it's sort of how uh i wanted these sort of conversations to go yeah. um is it it's you know it's almost like uh it's almost like guitar playing like you can't always get to that place <laughs> and uh i i want to be able to be like as open as possible and just sort of i don't know you made it easy so thanks no no worries fine. no so I'm, I'm happy to hear that thank thank you for having me it's been great to finally actually talk to you it, yeah yeah and hopefully we can do it again mm, that'd be ace yeah that'd be ace all right, man. Cool. Thanks again. No worries. Cheers.